how one becomes a bait easily, how perception and any decisions made only using perceptions can distort reality. Good afternoon. Uh, this is the, se uh, the third, rather, of June, twenty twenty-three, and this is from the Flower Garden of Kennington Park in central London. These are the main questions that I have to deal with on a personal, professional, and in many ways, public level as well, right now. Why is this important? Because very often, particularly in communities or environments where either the individuals or the culture have significant uh, shortcomings in emotional development, maturity, there could be a problem with assuming a position, assuming a behavior that is going by perception only, going by the template given to those people. Let them be in management position or in family position or in a romantic relationship or in academia even. And they stop thinking. They stop being inclusive, diversified, and stop being rational. There's always a question of normality, which is always depending on the culture, but as a um, bottom line, perhaps, not rigidly, of course, uh, but it's worth considering the following when it comes to any response or reaction from anyone, even from within ourselves, whether it's on the side of normality, whether it's reasonable, if you use linear logic, then logical, timely, and proportionate. Again, even if the behavior or the response be witnessed either from within ourselves or in somebody else is untimely, unreasonable, unreasonable or disproportionate, always remember two things. One of them is that the behavior or uh, the response we see or even a label or a diagnosis is never ever the entire person. We use those labels, um, diagnoses, opinions even, or um, models to understand and manage complexity better. They must not become the aim, the only the tool, they the means to get to a, a more inclusive, diversified and fair outcome. That's really important. On the other hand, every human being always, I mean always, make rational decisions. If their decision appeared to be irrational, disproportionate, untimely, that's possibly because we either don't know, we the one who views it, even if we view it within ourselves, in our behavior, in our feelings or thoughts. Either we uh, don't know the whole story, consciously, or the truth is yet to be unearthed. I'm not saying everybody has to, everybody has to wear their heart on their sleeves. No, not at all. But they need to know their own truth. And I find useful to have more than one equally plausible, equally valid, equally reasonable, rational, explanation for everything we experience, including our own narrative for the events we either live through or the stories and memories, frameworks we have inherited. That's crucial now. And why it is crucial? Because it's called epigenetics, that feature, that phenomenon. That means we can inherit memories from our ancestors to a variety of proteins and internal cell mechanisms I don't want to go into in so much detail. Therefore, it is important what we think. And it's important what we think about things and people because of what we think that we become. 
I think it was Quentin Crisp who said that there is no point in uh, um, doing pig farming for 30 years and saying, really, I was meant to be a ballet dancer because after 30 years, by that time, you are a pig farmer. There is no point in waiting that one day there will be everything ready and lined up for me to take that opportunity and become myself because it never will come. Time is never, ever better than right now. And it doesn't have to be an external thing in the visible world, in the shared reality. It can be in the internal world. I'm afraid it appears to me that we are novices when it comes to managing existence with consciousness, i.e. having this built-in time machine in us. So we can be in the reality, do things in the real world, and at the same time, in our mind, we can be in the past, reflecting on things or regretting things, or in the future, imagining things, visualizing things, setting goals, or consumed with failure. It's only a question of decision, really. From outside, whether it's fear or excitement, whether it's regret or reflection, may look the same, it's biosimilar. Seeing somebody weak, only having just snippets of encounter with them face to face, most of the time dissociating, particularly if someone is a female and the other partner is in, in this interaction is a male like myself, and being consumed by fear means dissociating automatically. That's not a question of decision. It's a reflex 